Now, old, some of the folks who've been a ham for longer know what that is. Some of the folks who haven't been, a chirp is a CW signal, which instead of being a steady tone, like you think, the tone changes in frequency. So it, it, it basically kind of goes up in frequency as you're, uh, uh, as you're on each one. So it's not a, just a steady thing. So not the preferred thing to have, but it got on and made a, lot, a whole lot of contacts. In the end, basically the whole eastern United States was in on this opening. This is the map of the folks in Illinois, but pretty much what we worked with BFB2 on two meters, we worked. This was a time which the multipliers now are grid squares in, in VHF context, but back then there were eight of RL sections, which really wasn't particularly fair to us folks down in the south because we had basically North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia sections. And you know, you go up to, they had Eastern Massachusetts and Western Massachusetts as a section. So you take a little state and you cut it in half. And they got two multipliers. And we got, you know, you could put five, you know, 10 of those in North Carolina probably. So anyway, but this is what we worked. Uh, more basically, we worked one more section than the folks uh, on that did. Unfortunately, I don't have exactly what we did, but uh, uh, I've, I've counted it out, and it looks to be uh, I translates to about what well, I think Doug for BFB worked 34 states on two meters in that that weekend. Uh, and we also, so, so at the end of the contest, you know, we've had a few different groups here. The guy on the mountaintop in Vermont would achieve his goal of winning the whole thing. Uh, and with BFB, we would win the whole thing. So this was the one and only time I know of that uh, uh, W4BFB won the whole VHF contest. And actually one of only... Uh, three about times I know of that that's been done from the south. So it's a, it's a rare thing and takes, takes something unusual. So we ended up with uh, 1,017 two-meter contacts, which is just unheard of for, for that. And I understand they were talking to, you know, mobiles in Chicago on, on a two-meter FM, that it was that intense. Uh, part of what was going on, and, and because of the way this propagation was, power didn't really seem to matter. Uh, the signals were, were strong enough that you were either in this weather front induced conditions or you weren't. For example, you know, I'm working in Vermont with that little radio on, and antenna. Uh, the guys in Illinois work pretty much the same thing with 10 watts on 432 that they worked with the KW on 2 meters. Uh, and it was more the time as the weather front shifted determined what you would work, not how much power you were putting into it. It was, uh, you know, there were times, and people who were outside of this opening, I mean, they just got nothing. They were hearing people, some people were hearing, you know, a neighbor work all this stuff, and they were on the wrong side of the weather thing and not not working anymore. And this is a, the weather map uh, from them. And you'll, as you'll notice, uh, there's a big high pressure center right here. And it's, it's what is uh, controlling the thing. And it's a big slow moving high pressure system. Now, some people don't like that because what a high, slow moving high pressure system tends to give you is smog. Because it's hold not only is it holding radio signals close to the earth, it's holding all the pollution close to the earth too. In fact, um, I've seen a picture from a mountain where they actually you can kind of see the line where you can see like the the basically dirtier air down low and the clearer air above. And it's this fact that the uh, what normally there's a, a pretty uniform transition of warm air to cool air from up from the ground up and what happens with these things inversions is you get a break to where 
it stops being, it, it, it basically stops cooling for a while as you go up, and that effect affects the radio signals. Now there is a whole, you know, if you want to really get into that, uh, there's actually a free book online that uh, uh, the Radio Society of Great Britain has put their book, VHF book, uh, that has a chapter on propagation free uh, for downloading. So that's uh, something if you really, if you wanted to look more. Uh, there's also some magazine articles about about this, um, and I wanted to thank uh, the, some of the folks who communicated with me, uh, K4CSO, W3EP, N6NB, who were at those other operations we talked about. Uh, Kim Hensman, uh, K K4ATX, now once again WA4VKW down in Fort Mill, who was part of the W4BFV, who took a bunch of pictures. Who I'll, I'll give you a slight hint for those of you around, I think the pictures were the contest before or something, but you know, it's the same, uh, same basic uh, uh, look of the operation. Uh, and also, you know, just have to say for, for those of you who may know him, uh, Ted Goldthorpe was the grand poobah of this, uh, W4BHF, and you know, taught me bunches and bunches and bunches and got me involved with something that's been uh, lifelong fun, fun uh, thing. I've been at this since, uh, you know, I got I, I first contest, VHF contest I went on, I was sitting there in the Red Cross building and they showed a video of freezing their tails off in January up on a motorhome somewhere up on the Blue Ridge Parkway and I find myself as a high school kid going in June to the next one of those. So. Uh, uh, just from a, a program, you never know what you're going to find out or get involved with at a program at a at a radio club meeting. And so some people have said, well, you know, are you ever going to have anything like this? When will another opening like this happen? And, you know, we've got some good openings that are pieces of this. We've had the band opening to the Northeast or the band opening to... But, in effect, this was kind of 360. You know, it was open in all directions all at the same time, and that has, has never happened again. Uh, maybe it will. It's been 38 years. I, I hope, keep hoping it will, but uh, I guess we'll see. So what was the, the QSO count of that contest versus what you'll do typically? Today? Well, typically today we're doing 200, between two and 300 on two meters we did a thousand seventeen on two meters then, uh, so that's some margin of the of, of the scope of things, uh, and with poorer equipment and poorer antennas. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, we we had you saw this. We had the stack of three antennas now that we run from Boone when you, on two meter sideband. We had a, one single antenna, uh, and so you know the. the Preamps and radios are just so much better. You can hear better than you could back then, and so we, you know, given equal conditions, we'll work a whole lot more. But what we didn't have, we 